announces Zimabro. How the fuck did you get that? Uh, I, I tasted Zim and Zimabro and was set the other week and I was like, oh, that's what, that's what tastes like a Zimabro. <laughs> All righty, welcome back to Wine for the People. Uh, this is our blind tasting show, where today, myself, Henry, and Brenda are about to try these six wines, which are apparently made from obscure grape varieties. We're gonna try, guess what they are, what we think they should cost you, how much we like them, and how many we'd buy, regardless of how much money we have, which, uh, in these times is not much. Big thanks to our friends at Different Drop who have selected and sourced all of these really obscure varieties, making it really challenging for us. Um, so if you want to go purchase any of these wines from the show and try something really, really different, hit the link below, head to the, uh, the Different Drop website and get to the Wine for the People segment and chuck in the code WFTP. You'll get 10% off, it kicks back to us on the show, so it's really helpful and it also supports the wonderful people at Different Drop. Uh, so let's not get mucking around. Let's try six obscure varieties from Australia or anywhere else in the world. Venus number uno uh, is uh, orange in color and brilliant in clarity. Yeah, brilliant. Like this, this I think is sort of one of those sort of textbook things when uh, someone goes, hey man, do you want to have a glass of orange wine? And I go, yes, and they give me this, and I, this it ticks all the boxes. Like, I, this is exactly what I expect. That has been left, sit on the skins, get that orange color through it, so I'm expecting this to potentially be interesting. Let's put it that way. Uh, on the nose, yeah, ooh. It actually smells really nice. Really gentle fizz. There is a lovely chalky texture. And then there, all of the citrus is really there. It's like all of that grapefruit, like a kombucha tea kind of thing. Really fresh, really energetic. And very, very refreshing. There's a nice saltiness there as well. First taste of the day is a throwaway. <laughs> Just, I've had a lot of caffeine. I'm so jet lagged. Yeah, so this this is my thing with orange wines. Every time, it smells great, and then it just leaves me wanting more on the palate. I don't know. It could be. I'm gonna go Italian. I'm gonna say it's from Italy. I'm just gonna guess country because I'm quite trying to guess these obscure varieties. Forty five bucks on this. I think it's really classy, and I would happily buy twelve bottles. I think that is just ex that's exactly what I'm looking for. Wine number two. All right, this is the trap wine because it looks like normal white wine, but we're doing alternate varieties, so who actually knows? Really clean, cleansing style of white wine. It's got a really great deal of texture, um, but the acidity is really charging. Crunchy kind of green apple is the main kind of flavor here. Um, there is that kind of lime oil, lemon zest, um, frangipani floral thing there as well. Straight off the bat, by look, smell, I'm like, Reasoning, taste, I'm like, greener? Definitely a lot softer, lower acid, much more mellow. Almost briny, like the uh, associate, I would associate it with sort of like seafoody sort of flavor, like very dry. And I'm gonna buy three bottles and I'm gonna pay, I think it's 40 bucks for that one. It is a fine white wine. It is a very, very fine white wine, but I, if you're going to make it in a Riesling style, why not just make Riesling? Uh, it's gonna be much easier to sell. It's not just an obscure thing, but the, it is very refreshing and pleasing, but I just, I can't see a reason why to buy it. Um, anyways, I don't think it's worth like a crazy amount of money because I don't think it's a stellar blockbuster, super complex, like, you know, terroir expressive variety, but uh, I would happily drop 20 bucks a bottle and I would happily buy 12 for the volume effect. For like, I, this is cannon fodder. This is perfect cannon fodder wine for those mates that just, they're like, I drink white wine. Give them this, big more love. <laughs> Moving to one number three, we get into the brown. Actually, it's 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 more like uh, like three Barocas uh, brown. It's not really. It's it's definitely orange. Orange wine, classically. Ooh, interesting nose. Definitely different to the first wine. Yeah, right. That's cool. It's got it's really thin mouthfeel, which is interesting. Like it, it feels very uh, thirst quenching in the sense that you don't feel like you've got a mouthful. It's just this river of liquid flowing down your throat. What the fuck is that? Amazing acidity, fresh squeeze like mandarin juice, um, which is really delicious. Um, like clementine and tangelo, all of those. Speaking of obscure varieties, all the obscure citruses are all in here. Only like. I'm seeing a lot more sourness in, into the acidity, but I don't think it's it's like um, what we call volatile acidity or like volatile sourness, product of malic. 
Sourness probably linked to this herbaceousness green element, like underripe element. That could be a product of Telar, it could be a product of the, the grape variety. You know, that, that's neither here nor there. No, I got no idea. I've got no idea what variety that wine is. Let's go with, uh, uh, it's from somewhere in Italy. I've just, I've changed the rules. I'm no longer guessing, I'm no longer guessing the varieties. I'm just guessing which countries the weird varieties come from because I feel like there's a better chance of me jumping off there somewhere. Number four, bit of rosé, absolute rosé. Usually when I look at these things, it's like that sort of light whiff of raspberry, but it's it's typically like more lean and fresh and sort of like glassy cherries. This is this is more dense. All right, this describes the opulence a little bit more. There's a cloyingness to this. This might have already occurred. I think I'm having a bit day about deja vu because I've smelled the wine and I know the wine and we've done this before and I reckon this is the wonderful close burn rosé. And again, I'm gonna go for infinity bottles. This is a bit of a flashback. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna pay 60 bucks for infinity bottles. Close burn rosé is the best rosé in the world because it's made from Tabouran and that is one of the most obscure grape varieties in the fucking world. Yum. Yeah, like it lots. Like it lots. Give me a does. It's exactly what I want out of rosé. Like, easy drinking. That cold would be lovely. It's like this fairy, flossy, pomegranate-y, like, grapefruit. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And I love that texture. It's just absolutely stunning. I love this one. The mineral, salty finish. The texture, it's so good. I think it's probably from how it's made. I think it's a Salasso or a Sanye, where the juice has been bled off from a red wine. So the red wine was the goal. Uh, I think this was uh, made at red wine ripeness. Which again, I believe is Italian. So two for two on the Italians there. Uh, I reckon this is gonna be slightly cheaper than I thought. 28 bucks a bottle. And I'm thrilled about that because I bought a dozen. So I'm just saving heaps of money through this tasting. It's musky, it's floral. It's got that kind of lovely, like, like wild strawberry character. Cranberries there as well. Like it's a very, I think like some people say this is the greatest rosé in the world. And I think that quite right. Um, amazing. All right. Straight away, looking at this wine, I think I'm gonna like it. Uh, it just has a vibrancy and fun to the color of it. That smells very peculiar. <laughs> um, it smells like what I imagine it's new sneakers, but it's not like A-grade new sneakers. Wow, yeah, that has got some sour characters there. Yeah, really sour cherry. Or like the, I'm not sure what the biscuits were, I think they were called Monte Carlos, where you could sort of like, this is like such an Australian thing, because I don't think Arnott's Biscuits is anywhere but Australia, maybe New Zealand. So our Kiwi friends might know this, but you could like just crack them open, or like ice bovos, and you're just eating ice bovos, that's what it smells like. Delicious, lean, fresh, high, green acid. It does have that sourness of that other wine. So this is an example of how I would actually see it as being an exceptionally good thing. Uh, Playboy Ice. I really like that. 12. That's a red fruit flavor that I haven't really encountered in red wines before. It could be fucking Grollo or something weird like that. I don't know. I'm just going to call it juice. Um, give me, give me six. Give me six of this. Um, it is a little bit sour. It is a little bit kind of that sour cherry thing. It's delicious, but it's just like, I think I'd get sick of that. I don't think it's going to be that much, but I would more than happy if you're like, hey man, here's this bottle. Do you want to try this? It's probably Gamay or something similar. Uh, maybe Nero that's been handled really lightly. Uh, 40 bucks, would you take it? I'm like, yeah, man, I'd take fucking 12. And the last one. Oh, it's got some, uh, it's got some brown and it's got some brown to it. That is, that is some betadine looking numbers. That is, I, I feel my, my knees stinging already like I've already slipped over in the playground. It could, like I said, it could be aged Nebbiolo, it could be an aged variant which would look a little bit like this, but it's just something a little bit funny about how, how the brown looks. <laughs> the brown don't look right. This has a faded, faded brown rim, so I'm thinking it's a little bit older or it's a characteristic of the varietal. It doesn't go, like the color is really focused in the middle and then as it gets to the outsides, the shallows of the wine, if you will, really loses some of the intensity of the color. Yeah, I love that kind of dried raisin, like mus muscatel character. I think it's a banger. I think this is probably worthy of a, another half does. Actually, the maturation of this is shrouding the, the expression of the grape. Um, there is evident tannin there. It is svelte though, it's like rubbing that suede velvet across your teeth. So it is, whatever this is, it's in its prime drinking window freaking now. I would, I would not want to wait. I don't think this is a cellaring thing. And in fact, if you are interested in learning what good aged wine looks like when we talk about matured red wine. Now this reeks of Carmenere to me. 
Carmen Air is what that is. Thank you very much. If you don't know what Carmen Air is, uh, it's a great variety from the Cabernet family. It's from the Murdoch region originally, but we all know this. I'm just talking to other scholars here. Uh, yeah, definitely favorite wine would have been that Gamay. Well, it's not Gamay, but the thing that I call Gamay somewhere along the line, but can see what the boys think as well. All righty. Um... Another six wines, uh, obscure varieties. And I think, mm. yeah, there's there's conventional varieties, there's alternative varieties, mm -hmm. and then there's obscure varieties. Yeah, it's really in my wheelhouse this week. Yeah, yeah I thought really you really smashed yeah, this you've been, one out. You've been br brushing up on your, um, your all your Portuguese tinters, your tinta barocas, <laughs> your tinta cows, your oh, all yeah. your tinters. Slanka Mancabella Slanka. is probably the best one I've ever encountered. <laughs> yeah. Would you say that's obscure? I'd say it's pretty run of the mill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm Total all... Wednesday night wine. Yeah, and and Cruzado, you one of your big fans. <laughs> big fan in uh, yep. anyways uh, but yeah I think this was a bit of a challenge I like honestly for the most part I didn't try guess variety there was a couple that I was like oh that reminds me of that mm. but mm -hmm. other than that I'm like fuck I don't know quality though there's some quality wines here really enjoyed them I, re uh, I liked some... all of the wines yeah yeah I like some of the wines <laughs> <laughs> peak. Yeah. peak Henry like some of the wines uh, well let's get into it uh, wine number one uh, was this fizzy for you gents because there was a bit of fizz oh, oh no 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 nah. yeah that was a bit of fizz oh it was, was there it was pretty it was pretty genteel I would up my order from 12 to 24 if there was fizz in this. Yeah, there was a bit of fizz. Um, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, like a bit of a gentle fizz. Um, definitely had like a bit of, a, bit of a, like a brisante vibe. I love that. Uh, which was really fun. Yeah, it was delicious. Um, I'm all about it. I love the smell of it. I'm not so, not so hot on it when it's in your mouth, unfortunately. Um, I would have loved, if it had fizz in it, I'd probably gone from one to three bottles. Yeah. Oh, to you. wow, yeah, man. I, just the flavor of it, not for me. I just thought, smelled amazing. I thought this was like, if, if orange wine in the like encyclopedia, this was like right dead smack bang in the middle of every single style. Yeah. It is like the most universal take on orange yeah. wine. It's not quite as like entry level or light as like some other orange wines get and it's not fucking Radicon. So nah. it's, it's, yeah, it's the Goldilocks orange wine. I don't love the finish on it. I think that's the thing that really takes away from it. It almost tastes sort of like uh, varnishy or something on the back end. Like lanolin's the word that pops to mind. I've got no idea mm. if that's the right word. Mm. But yeah, it's got this kind of like kumquat finish. Mm. 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 Like. Mm. Um, kumquat, great shout. Oh. Mm. Um, half a dozen for me, uh, 58 bucks. I reckon this is Italian. Uh, 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 one for 33, I said it was Vermentino. 12 for 45, I don't care what it is. I really like it. <laughs> I really think it was cool. How much? Boom, I bought it so far. Man. All right, let's see how obscure these varieties How obscure, yeah. what's obscure? <laughs> All right, uh, Cuvée <laughs> Especial Itata, IOC. Fuck, okay. The only thing I understand on this bottle is that that's an owl. That's the only <laughs> thing I've managed to pick up from looking at the front of that bottle. So Jed Wines, uh, the importer. Toronto. Torontes? Toronto. Toronto. So it might, that, might, that might be a synonym for some Torontes, to be honest. Mm. Arbola Arriba. Arbola Arriba. Uh, I'd say the only other place that I know that grows Torontes is Argentina. Chile. This is Chile. Chile. Chilean Torontes. Well, then we went from weird to, I mean, this is not weird. No. It's not that weird. No, no, it's like if Riesling had no acid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah totally agree. That, I think that's the, the, the bugbear I have with it, is that it's like, it tastes like Riesling. Mm. So why wouldn't you just buy Riesling? It's not, totally. it's not, it's an obscure grape variety, but it's not an obscure style. Mm. But I'm a vibe it. Because okay. it's a volume drinker, Yeah. Mm. right? If it's going to taste like it could be anything, then hey, if it's 25 bucks, I'll buy 12. Yeah, reasonable. Mm. Um, I'm going to say Crucian. Yeah. Because I can. <laughs> South African Crucian. Boom. Sure. Uh, uh, three bottles, 40 bucks for me. Uh, 20 and 12. Lucky. 38. 38. Yeah. Nice. Real house. Magic number. It is the magic number. Yeah, wow. These ding, wines ding, are ding, calling ding. the magic number, man. Yeah, we're worried. Oh. Filion. Filion. Chenin Blanc. It's not obscure. Chenin Blanc. Grenache, Grenache Blanc. Blanc. Oh. Fuck you. Oh my God. <laughs> Your favorite. Look. <laughs> that makes sense. It's got no acid. Grenache doesn't have acid. It's like Riesling. Oh yeah. my god. Sorry, man. that was my bad. I was sort of feeling. I know they make uh, fantastic Shannon. I was like, that's not obscure. But yeah, Grenache Blanc. I w like contentious obscure, but I'll pay it. If you went Grenache Gris, that's fucking obscure. <laughs> um, but yeah, Grenache Gris. Um, I'd still drink the shit out of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I just think it's like, where, where do you put that above another grape variety for thirty-eight bucks? Like you could buy, you could spend thirty-eight bucks on another hard, variety, man. and it's just that's gonna hard. be. I think it's well made. And the Ophelion it's wouldn't gorgeous. make like shitloads of this stuff either, so I think it's sort of. Four hundred dozen. Oh, oh no, sorry, two hundred dozen. Four hundred half dozens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not there's not a huge quantity there, um, and I think that's sort of appropriate the the right amount of volume that you would sell at that price point. Um, Looks nice. Fun wine. It's got 
pretty. Yeah. And it's very much up Rob's alley. Like this yeah. is his classic style of winemaking. He's very much classically trained and he does it really well. Yeah, respect. We love mm. you. We love your wines, Rob. They're great. Uh, number three, uh, another orange number. You said varnish before. Mm. This was fucking yeah. varnish. Yeah, 100%. This was like absolute, just this like is real up polish. On the top end of that sort of spectrum before we get into full blown, yeah, like, is this faulty or not? Yeah. yeah. And interestingly, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like I, want to, <laughs> I want to see a straddle that night. I don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was good. This I is really a total it. edgelord of a wine. I um, yeah. uh, I wanted one bottle, but I'm willing to pay 60 bucks for that bottle. And it, yeah. it's not that I didn't like the wine. I actually love the wine. I just don't need more than one bottle. I think it's really easy drinking compared to <laughs> wine number one. I don't yeah, know. That's <laughs> really interesting. Yeah, I think that like it's just got that sort of little kumquat like mandarin-y See, thing on the he's front already of the taken, He's taken that Still tasting note. Oh, but then it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> stick around. Like that one, I just have this taste in my mouth where I'm like, I wish that wasn't there, whereas yeah. this is gone. Yeah, it's got all of the, yeah, speaking of the score varieties, it's got all of the score citrus. It's got like tangelo, yeah. clementine, yeah, yeah, all yeah, that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah. Uh, delicious. Uh, I want a three, I'm happy to pay seven bucks. I reckon this might be Petit Mansin. 70. 70. 70. Yeah, mm. not 17. No. You reckon uh, Petit Mansin? Petit Mansin. I want to go on Jurançon. On this right. Bad boy. right. Half a dozen. I said it was thirty-eight bucks, and I thought it might have been from Italy, and that was what I had yeah, for that. Sixty and one, and I would just random stab at Slovenia. Thirty. Hey. Damn. That's, That's really good value. Really great value for that yeah. kind of quality. That's Get really. Good. <laughs> 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 it's not Grow Man Sang. No, Grow Man Sang. Grow Man Sang. Fuck, but it is Jerome it's, the, so. it's, it's the bigger Man Sang, not the smaller Man Sang. <laughs> Oh, that is. I was close. I'm, okay, just I'm anyone, anyone guessing man saying up from blind taste. It's yeah. Just like, what? Crazy. Uh, imported by our friends at Funk About Wine. Uh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, brilliant. Our, friend, our, our boys. But yeah, delicious. It is one of those sort of phenomenons. Like, if that was sixty bucks a bottle, I reckon it would sell more. I reckon. Interesting. I reckon it's too cheap. Like at thirty bucks, that is such a remarkable value. Like guys, if you're buying this for like thirty bucks. Put it in your cellar, just pretend it's 60. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> yeah. you do realize that now, since we know the people that import this wine, is like, you say I can charge more for this, oh, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> they should, they yeah. should. Neil, I, think, I think it fits. Bump it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Cahors. 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 Uh, Love Cahors. it. Number four. Mm. Oh, I struggled. I struggled. It's like, I firstly, I look at it and I don't think it's orange, I think it's uh, rosé. Yes. Same. I see it as like a sanyei thing and I think it's like, my sort of take on this was, I really just wanted it to commit to being light red or like lean rosé. I don't know, like when I'm reaching for rosé and it's like winter, I'm reaching for tarvel and if I'm reaching for rosé and it's summer, I don't, and it, when it's like mid-season, I'm not even there, I'm in, in, I'm in orange wine territory, so I just don't know where I would drink this. Uh, on the couch, like three nights a week. For me. I got <laughs> yeah. a dozen of it, loved it, thought it was sick. <laughs> Uh, I said Sangiovese, which is nowhere near obscure enough, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, potentially make myself look like a fool here, but okay. I, called, I called wine, I called uh, producer wine variety, the whole thing. So wow. I, reckon, I reckon we've had this one on the show before. Really? I reckon I've done this exact thing before. Really? I reckon this is closer bones to Boron Rosé. Putting that out there. I'll I'm be like, impressed. Um, I look like an absolute fucking fool, but. Uh, Do it, man. As I did the first time, uh, Infinity Bottles. Um, I love, love it. I love this style. I think it's so fucking cool. Um, 60 bucks. So I think that's what it costs. I was on 25 bucks and I wanted three. Uh, 28 and I wanted 12. <laughs> Rocking it. That's really impressive. <laughs> it's really impressive. It's super impressive yeah. to do. Every time it's like a yeah. magic trick. Like, how did the coin get there? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that is incredible. Uh, it, is the, it is the greatest rosé in the fucking world. Some say. Uh, I agree. S I love it. Some say, honestly. That's Man. ridiculous. <laughs> uh, clearly I've got there. If I if I do my uh, Wusset exam and that comes up, I'm gonna be stoked. <laughs> okay, yeah, all the way through. Uh, well done. Scrummy. Love yeah, it. yum. Uh, number five. This was my wine of the week. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with you on that. This is my favorite wine, uh, along with the rosé that we just had. But yeah, this is I love this. Rosé was my favorite, but I'm more than happy to give this right wine of the week because this is fucking great fun. Yeah. This is just this is so much fun. Phenomenal. I don't know what it is because it smells like it smells like um, Grenache, but has the sour cherry acid of like a Nero Double. It's fucking cool. I was ass. torn between like I mean, this is there's a bit of Cab Mac thing going on, the yeah. raspberry compote thing. This is like an example. I found like a great green sourness here from like like a green acid and I think this is where green acid really looks 
great. Mm. It's framed this way. It smells so good. Oh yeah, my God. I just, yeah, I'm just so taken. I just think it's everything. It ticks every single box perfectly well for exactly what that is. Uh, Smitten. Yeah, uh, I didn't have a guess at variety or anything like that. I just called it Juice. Yeah. J double O C E. Um, six bottles, 40 bucks. I was actually trying to cheat off your sheet and I saw that and I'm like, oh, what's Jose? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of that variety. Jose, Let's make um, our own cross and call it Jose. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, Gamay. Like, again, I don't know yeah, obscure variety. Like Gamay Nero. Yeah, Nero is a good Nero, shout on this. Yeah. Nero is a great shout on this. 12 for uh, 48 bucks I had. Dude, I had 12 for 40. Ah, oh, yeah, Shacarello! It's the Shack. Shacarello. Yeah. Yeah. So well done. The Kerner boys do such, such, such a good job at this. Yeah, that's the champions really cool. Of Shacarello, uh, because mm. someone's got to fly the flag. Uh, and yeah, this is probably one of their more uh, sought after wines because, you know, it's like, it's so mm. delicious. Yeah, um, mm. and we're keeping an eye out for that. Yeah, it's so good. It's probably, yeah, 45 bucks is not Damn, bad at all. man. Um, That's awesome. And yeah, these guys have probably, I think, got some of the very few cuttings of this in Australia. In the, in the mighty Claire. And yeah, it's so, every, every so year, good. Every year, we've seen this a couple of times on the show. Every yeah. year. Yeah. Stunning. The first year Stunning I tried one. it, I was like, what the fuck is this? But I think they've really dialed in how to make it. Yeah, I got yeah, that I think sorted. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then the last one. What this? Oh, man. Like... I'm so torn. It doesn't, actually my comment was the brown doesn't look right. Like there's brown in wine that looks good. It's and pretty oxy. There's, there's something there. I mean, but the, the smell is fantastic. The flavor is fantastic. Like it, it lines up um, with everything that I would expect from like a, a matured, uh, you know, great red wine. Not 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 of stunning uh, prestige mm -hmm. and, and pedigree. If you're just, if, if you're an old wine guy or girl, person, like this is going to tick that box. So you I reckon just, this has seen age? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 100% seen, and looks like it. seen a great amount of maturation. Um, I think it's drinking window is now. I think it's fan, like a great wine. If, it, if it's like under 50 bucks, I think it's such a cool thing for people who like don't know what old wine is to yeah. just go and buy that. And yeah. be like, this is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that kind of, um, you, uh, you, you take Kumquat, I take Betadine from you. Mm. It's got Betadine vibes mm. all over it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I was like, yeah, mm. my, my gut instincts, uh, if we're going obscure, I went Zinamavro. <laughs> uh, which would have been my guess. Age Zinamavro. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. It yeah. just yeah. tastes like all the old cleaned skins that dad's got in his cellars. So it's just <laughs> unwound red well, fruit. Well, this is the thing with that. I think the, the, the elements of maturation, these sort of tertiary characteristics are really clouding, like getting in the way of varietal expression what like could I couldn't be. really tell you what like it just it has the cedar the tinder box the tobacco leaf it's got all of those things raspberry lolly like that's been oxidized at its core which is kind of nice yeah tannin is svelte it's like rubbing velvet on your teeth so I don't think there's much life left in it yeah, I think it's a, it's peak drinking. Drink it now. Mm. Um, if you do have a bottle of this in your cellar, but it's an obscure rose, so you probably don't. Yeah. Um, mm. What is it, Lockie? <laughs> now it's a Zimabro! How the fuck did you get that? Uh, I, I tasted Zim and Zimabro the other week, and I was like, what oh, that's what, that's what tastes like if it's Zimabro. <laughs> I do have a Nelson t-shirt now because I uh, kept on getting things right. That was That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. That's insane. <laughs> no. Grow Mansing, Taburin, the like producer and the variety as well as this. That is just, just bonkers. Yeah. After you've just gone on about how like you can't taste the variety in there because it's so clouded by the age and you're just like, it's in a Mavro, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the thing. If it tastes like Nebbiolo, but it's it's obscure and it's not pretty like a um, Norello or it's yeah. not as uh, grippy as a Saint Bay, it's like, just guess in a Mavro. Um, that's really what it is. That's amazing. It's a good take that home is, That is like, genuinely, <laughs> genuinely <laughs> amazing. Well done, Noah. Jesus Christ. That man. is very impressive. Well done. Uh, one of the one Shit, dude. Want to line up? Shack or Yeah, the Shack. Shack. Kind of Shack. Back to the Shack. Uh, yeah, again, the kind of boys. Cent. I think that's probably the third time they've taken out this fucking thing. Like, they, I think they're Pippin and Dr. Great Edge one. as far as, like, you know, some producing some of the best. Great uh, one. But how good? Very impressive. Hey, it's not all just Shiraz and Pinot out there, guys. There's some other <laughs> cool shit. Out, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that'll be it. Fuck. Oh, I'm still in shock. I'm still in shock. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding.